Welcome back to Something Different, the channel that takes you on a journey through the extraordinary, the unexplained, and the historical. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join us on this fascinating journey. Today, we're diving into a story that's been making headlines recently. It's a tale of historical wrongs being righted, of treasures lost and found, and of nations reclaiming their cultural heritage. Whether you're a history buff, a lover of mysteries, or someone who appreciates justice, this story is sure to captivate you. So buckle up and let's get started. The Netherlands, a country known for its windmills, tulips, and art, has recently made a decision that has sent ripples across the world. They have decided to return 478 cultural objects that were unjustly taken from Indonesia and Sri Lanka during the colonial period and ended up in Dutch museums. This decision marks the beginning of cooperation and exchange between the three parties involved. Among these treasures are the Indonesian Lombok treasure and the Sri Lankan Canon of Candy. The Lombok treasure, looted during one of the largest Dutch colonial incursions in 1894, consists of 335 objects of gold, silver, and precious stones. The Canon of Candy, a large caliber bronze cast gun, is richly decorated in gold, silver, and bronze with ruby inlays. But these are not just objects. They are pieces of history, fragments of a time when nations were conquered and cultures were appropriated. They tell stories of power, of conflict, and of resistance. And now, they are going home. The Lombok treasure was looted during one of the largest Dutch colonial incursions in 1894 in Bali and Lombok, which are islands in present-day Indonesia. This led to the expansion of Dutch control in the region, then known as the East Indies, which ranged from Indonesia to the Indian subcontinent. The Canon of Candy has a more complex history. It was either a gift or war booty from the 18th century when the Dutch East India Company, VOC, made a pact with Luc de Sava, the King of Candy, a city in present-day Sri Lanka. The VOC, which can be considered the first multinational company, had powers similar to a government. A drought that ruined the harvest led to a rebellion against the tax burden imposed by the company, and when the king sided with the rebels, conflict ensued. Investigations indicate that the cannon was not a gift, but was appropriated during armed conflict. In addition to these, four stone statues from the former Javanese Hindu kingdom of Singasari, a Keras dagger from the Klung Kung kingdom, and 132 objects of modern art from Bali, known as the Pita Maha collection, will be formally restored to the Indonesian government at the National Museum of Ethnology in Leiden on July 10th. This decision by the Dutch government is seen as a historic moment, a step towards acknowledging and rectifying the injustices of the colonial period. It follows the recommendations of the Commission for Colonial Collections, an advisory body to the government, which suggested that the object should be returned unconditionally if requested by their countries of origin. But the journey is not over. Other countries like France, Germany, and Belgium have also begun investigating their colonial collections and returning objects to their countries of origin. The UK, which holds a large number of disputed objects in the British Museum, has been more reluctant to take similar steps. As we wrap up, we invite you to ponder this story. It's a reminder that history is not just about the past, but also about how we choose to address it in the present. It's about justice, about respect, and about acknowledging the value of every culture. Thank you for joining us on this journey today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more extraordinary stories. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep embracing the something different.